Today we will be looking at the language policy for higher education in South Africa. In this presentation we will be looking at a policy summary which will go over the goals of the policy, who the intended audience is, the historical, educational, and cultural context to the policy, and also the challenges that this policy faces. We will then analyze this policy by looking at three specific themes following equity, security, and community. And finally, we will give critiques and recommendations based on what we have read in the policy. So let's travel back in time to 2002 when this policy was created. There are two specific goals in which this policy hopes to meet. The first was to create unity in social justice through the promotion of multilingualism. The second goal was to build a common sense of nationhood through the unification of language. The policy is directly aimed at government ministries as a note that further funding and investigations will be required in order to promote equality and economic development in South Africa. This policy directly affects all aspects of the school, from the administration to the faculty and the students. It is especially meant to affect students who are linguistically disenfranchised through a home language other than the dominant English or Afrikaans. Without the ability to speak one of those languages, many young adults in South Africa are unable to further their education due to the lack of diversity in the languages used during instruction. Oppression and control have played a significant role in South Africa's past. The use of language policy as an instrument of that control, oppression, and exploitation was one of the factors that triggered the two great political struggles that define South Africa in the 20th century. Afrikaners against British imperialism, and black community against white rule. Prior to this new South African language policy for higher education, the policy of separate development resulted in the privileging of English and Afrikaans as the official language of the apartheid state, and the marginalization and underdevelopment of African and other languages. For example, despite 12 different home languages being reported, English and Afrikaans are the only languages used as a medium of instruction in higher education prior to this new policy. There are a few areas to consider when thinking about the educational and cultural context of this policy. The first is access. Language has the ability to be a barrier for access and success in higher education. 50% of students in higher education institutes report an indigenous African language as their home language. And yet, the majority of universities use English as the sole medium of communication in and out of the classroom. The second area is rights. Everyone has the right to receive education in the official language or languages of their choice. Finally, the third area is economic. The study of foreign languages is important for economic development. In particular, those languages that promote the country's cultural, trade, and diplomatic relations. There are many challenges that policymakers face when constructing new policies that promote multilingualism. They must be able to develop a multilingual environment that ensures access and success, provide substantial financial resources, work within the status quo to develop language uses in higher education, and balance maintaining the use of Afrikaans while promoting other languages. In order to understand this policy, we must first understand what issues it addresses. This policy looks at languages used in instruction, the future of South African languages as fields of academic study and research, the study of foreign languages, and the promotion of multilingualism in the institutional policies and practices of institutions of higher education. The second theme we looked at was security. Security refers to both an individual's social and psychological security, as well as to economic security. 
Historically speaking, globalization and the current trends toward the world culture have had a major linguistic impact on education, with one aspect being the dominance of English in the global curriculum. The same is true of South Africa, as the use of English increased in the educational arena, particularly since 1976. This previous policy, which geared towards improving global relations, resulted in marginalization and oppression. The current language policy is an attempt at removing barriers to success, which have resulted from the dominant group's marginalization of native languages. While the primary goal of the South African policy may be social justice, the authors are also aware that economic development is possible through improvement of educational opportunities. The second goal, therefore, is to produce educated workers capable of contributing to society. This is acknowledged by the policy's mention of language that are important for the promotion of the country's cultural, trade, and diplomatic relations. The third theme we looked at was community. The South African policy on language usage can be viewed as a social justice initiative, but the author's intent is broader than individual freedoms. Education, according to Risby and Lingard, is defined as a basic human right and essential for social cohesion. This is exactly how the South African policy views education and this policy on language usage. The focus is not just on improving opportunities for individuals, but also for the country as a whole. While the goal of this policy is to encourage respect and end oppression, the overall mission of this government is to build a sense of nationhood. Former President Tabu Mbeki stated, For it is when the borderline between one language and another is erased, when the social barriers between the speaker of one language and another are broken, that a bridge is built, connecting what was previously two separate sites into one big space for human interaction, and out of this a new world emerges and a new nation is born. This In social order to frame make this will allow more integration of educational students initiatives and the citizens with linguistic of South aspects of other social and cultural recommendations. policies. The For example, being a stated that goal by of the National Heritage and Resources Act of 1999, we will be is able to add create a more concrete, socially based implementation that challenges linguistic dominance by empowering young learners in their home communities. Our second recommendation is that policymakers provide support for administrators who wish to take initiative beyond relying on the status quo. For example, Hugh found a principal that was frustrated with awaiting the systematic change at his inner city Cape Town school began his own HOSA language curriculum. Hugh also stated that research found that integration of their native HOSA language into the curriculum encouraged young students to reposition themselves, identify language right infringements, and make assertive choices. This social frame will allow integration of educational initiatives with linguistic aspects of other social and cultural policies. For example, a stated goal of the National Heritage and Resources Act of 1999 is to invigorate previously neglected research into our rich oral traditions and customs. When integrated with the language policy's goal towards academic and scientific legitimacy of non-dominant languages, study of multilingual oral traditions can facilitate a multicultural academic voice in South Africa as well as enhance South Africa's scholars' engagement with the international academic community.